Hey, I'm Decathlon Gamer, and welcome to our Tour de France discussion now on stage number 19. Just about there. We're heading into that final weekend, and well, today, eh, it's one you'd be forgiven for sleeping through, but uh, it's okay. Sprint stages are often like that. Uh, this one didn't end up in the type of way, though, you would expect. Uh, so at least it gave us that. Something a little different. Something a little unique. Uh, as I have no idea what I'm doing on the game here today, this is... Uh, I forgot the name. <laughs> oh, what am I playing? Uh, Rise to Ruins? Something like that. Uh, I'll let you know. Uh, anyway... So it's a sprint stage. It was stage 19. There's only two more to go. Uh, the GC is nearly decided. Tomorrow will be the decisive day with the individual time trial. Uh, by the way, in this game, I have no clue what I'm actually doing as... Uh, um, I've never played this game before, so... Uh, Gates and Walls harvesting. We probably need some of that, right? Yeah. Like a lumber shack. Okay. Uh, about up here. Mining facility. I'm guessing we're going to want this kind of stuff over here. There we go. I might want those crystal harvesters. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, housing's probably helpful, I would assume. So where to put some housing, I guess, out of here. And then we'll start on defenses soon. Yeah, I don't have any crystals. Alright, this looks like the basic stuff, but... Okay, we need those crystals. Let's go back and grab some. Uh, today was a one-man show for Remy Cavagna for hours. Uh, hours. Completely alone. Uh, and it, it looked very intentional, actually. So, Kevanya is a teammate of Sam Bennett, and this is the key to this one. So, Remy Kevanya uh, attacked right from the off. No available wood. Oh, I can't go this far out for some reason. Too far away from our base. Well, then where the heck am I supposed to put this thing? Yeah, it's got to go out here. That's not such a good thing. Okay, there you go. Uh, how do we get this out? Close, close, close. There you go. All right, so our initial camp is up. And there you see we have kind of a range issue. Uh, yeah, not good. No available wood. That's our main thing. And our wood camp is uh, struggling here. So how do we take care of that? Can I do something with you guys together? Is this even wood? I thought it looked like trees. Dead trees. Small amount. Okay, 12%. They're doing a little bit. They've made some progress. Oh. Harvest wood. Ta da. Uh, let's, I think, start with this because we want this area. Yeah, 
There we go. Harvest all of that. So while that's going on, so Cavania rides solo. Now, uh, the reason why I said this is intentional, as a teammate of Bennett, here's the thing about this stage. Bennett's at the point where he's just about got the green jersey wrapped up going into this stage. So I think my, uh, my feeling behind this one is that Cavania and the kind of quick step are under the impression that if Cavania rides absurdly hard off the front, sets a tempo that nobody else can match, those riders are eventually going to sit up and go back and rejoin the peloton, which is exactly what happened. He set an absurd pace and was not allowing anyone else. The peloton was letting riders off the front. Uh, even Gil Martin was off the front, and they all just sat up and went back over and over again, one by one, they were just like, yeah, no, that's enough of this. And then Cavania was out to a few minutes, and, and it was going good. But there was enough people wise enough to it. Now, I think the reason why Quick Quickstep would do this, and why they would send Cavania on a absurdly long time trial, is if he goes and gets a 10-minute gap. If the Peloton truly sits up and lets him have a 10 minute gap and he can solo ride his way, well, a couple things happen. One, puts the pressure on Bora Hansgrohe because Sagan really needed some points. And two, if he hangs on and wins it, he's getting those 50 points all of a sudden we're down to a, a maximum of 30 points available for second across the line. So you're taking away 20 potential points, if not more, away from Sagan. So devastating blow to the Bora Hansgrohe team. Also, you might force Bora Hansgrohe then into chasing and burning through two riders or three riders later in the stage, taking away Sagan's support. So it makes sense in a lot of ways. And for Duquenne Quick Quickstep, what's the harm? You're sacrificing one rider. Who's a good time trialist. So it makes a lot of sense for them. But it doesn't quite work out. The field recognizes what he's up to. And he never does get a massive break. Uh, looks like this is ready. How do I assign workers? There we go. Two workers. No, I don't want to dismantle. Okay, upgrades. understaffed really it's a staff of two oh, it's just that they're not there yet all right they're working on that construction otherwise and still gathering up some wood for us so while I don't have a whole lot of an idea as to what's going on in this game and I know we're gonna come under attack before long and I have no way to deal with that currently. That's okay. They're doing something. That then carries us hours down the road with no action and no sense of urgency. Cavania rode hard for a rider that was riding solo, but ultimately the field, while it wasn't the easiest, day that they could have and we've certainly seen far easier days they weren't riding hard it was one rider that they were chasing and because they never allowed the gap to open 
in the first place, they were keeping a moderate pace. And thanks to the moderate pace, it was ultimately an easy day, or, or should I say a moderately easy day. That carries us all the way to the intermediate sprint, which unlike the recent stages where that intermediate sprint was early in the stage, this one was actually pretty late in the stage. So we're already to the late point of this stage. Now, just before we get there, of course, Cavagna was out there all alone. Three riders break away off the front just three, four kilometers before the intermediate sprint, meaning there's four riders away. But coming across the line fifth, as always, Sam Bennett. But finally, Sagan, and actually without a whole lot of effort, you could really see today Bennett, oh, that guy is fatigued. He is tired. Sagan easily overtakes his teammate and comes across next, but still can't beat Bennett. So 11 points for Bennett, 10 for Sagan. Trentine is the one this time caught in between that lead out man. Two points further back, getting eight. That means the gap is 53 after the intermediate sprint, which is exactly level, if not for the penalty. Which I saw lots of zoomed in footage of it this morning, uh, unintentionally waking up super early. Uh, I, I mentioned in the video a couple days ago that we've got some major, major wildfires up and down the west coast of the United States right now. Uh, the biggest of which has claimed almost 30 lives and uh, uh, whole towns have been burned down uh, nearby across the uh, Columbia River border in, into Oregon. Uh, and I've been living in a huge cloud of smoke for uh, a little over a week now. Uh, overnight, we got our first rain in probably a month and a half, almost two months. And with it, and with all that cloud, all that ash in the air, uh, a really neat and interesting uh, electrical storm, thunder and lightning. Uh, but because of the ash, before the rain fell anyway, because of the ash, the thunder was echoing off of the, off of the ash cloud, uh, or through the ash cloud. Uh, really, really drawing out every little clap of thunder instead of, you know, instead of it lasting th two, three, four, sometimes five seconds. Each clap of thunder was lasting, you know, almost 30 seconds long as it just kept echoing back and forth. It was, it was really neat. But it also woke me up at two o'clock this morning, uh, which, uh, by the way, uh, here on the West Coast of the U.S., I've been getting up generally at three or 3.30, sometimes four o'clock. Uh, every day for the tour since I started doing this. Uh, prior to doing this, prior to that CPU going down, I was uh, watching replays after the stage was done and gets uploaded uh, by my channel that I watch, my subscription package that I have. And uh, yeah, it's been a tough couple of weeks. I'm actually looking forward to uh, waking up at a normal time starting next week. Anyway, I'm far less fatigued than the riders themselves are. Uh, and I really got to enjoy that, that storm. It, it did help clear up some of the uh, ash in the air. It's definitely not as bad now after uh, uh, about two and a half hours of pretty solid rain this morning. Gap at 53. So without that penalty, they are exactly level on points at that point, which... Stage 19 with an individual time trial on 20 and then the Champs-Élysées. Could you imagine how exciting that would be? Think about this. The points classification, at least at, after intermediate sprint, okay? We'll, we'll talk about after the stage when we get to that point. After the intermediate sprint, we're talking about zero point differential. Exactly level with one sprint finish and one stage, one sprint stage to go. That close to the end of the tour and exactly level on points. And, and Trentine almost in reach. 40 something, 50 something points behind 
uh, after, you know, if we don't have that penalty assessed. And then, not just that, that's green jersey, excitement. Polka dot jersey, two point difference. That's going to be exciting. We're going to talk about that at the end of the stage a little more. Yellow jersey, less than a minute separating the top two. Certainly not something we see very often. Uh, usually the gap is definitely a bit larger than that. Sometimes three minutes plus. Third place is only a minute and a half back. It's not over by any means, though, yes, Roglic certainly looks like he's uh, heading for victory. It's anything but guaranteed right now. The white jersey, the only one that is not close. <laughs> not only is that one not close, it's really not close. Except it kind of is still. It's out of reach. Second place overall. Pogachar is three minutes ahead of Enrique Moss. The only other under 25s rider in the top 10. And with the withdrawal, the abandonment of Egon Bernal, all of a sudden we find ourselves looking at two plus hours, I think it is, to third place in that contest. So it's not at all close, but there's two guys in a almost kind of sort of reasonable amount. Well, we were just saying that three minutes really isn't that close, right? So one contest that's not close, but three contests that are all neck and neck after 19 stages of the tour. And how many people thought that this tour wouldn't even get to Paris? There were a lot. Speaking of not getting there, well, there's another somebody who's not going to get there. If you didn't hear this news before the stage, the race director for Jumbo Visma has been excluded from the race and sent home. Not due to COVID-19, but due to a tirade. No available rock. Okay, we are out of rock. Let's fix that here. Uh, rock, rock, rock. Something down here. Harvest rock. Sweet. Let's go for these little guys here first. All right, well, uh, trying to keep an eye on that clock of sorts in the top right. There's two red lines. I don't know if that means there's an attack coming, uh, but it's spring, day one, year one. If there's an attack coming, we don't have any proper defenses, so we'll see how this one goes. complaining is it about not having a house is that what they're uh, freaking out about could be uh, oh hello I could add two more farmers let's do that I do like how the uh, the rolls are breaking down out here except for I only seem to have one person I have to subtract a couple builders to make that happen Will that make that happen? Population's 13. I have 16 rolls. Aha. Aha. Okay. Okay. Dude, we're getting somewhere. Okay. Well, that still leaves one free, but, you know, I'm okay with that. I don't need so many builders. We're almost done with the building part, sort of, somehow. Farm's done, chicken coop's done, or chucker coop, clucker, is that a clucker coop? There you go. Uh, and the camp is done, nothing else at the moment. But yeah, just how exciting would that be that we've gotten to where we are? Not only are we going to see the end of this tour, but... That simple fact that we have so much excitement, so many close contests, 
it's turned out to be a really good Tour de France. It really has. But it would be so much better if they didn't assess that stupid penalty. Anyway, I saw those replays uh, of when Sagan got that penalty up close, really, really zoomed in. Uh, good quality footage. It's clear as day. Clear as day that all he did was avoid that selfie stick with a cell phone on the end of it. He just ducked out of the way and barely tapped into Van Art. Barely tapped into him. It was really minor. And it didn't affect either of them, other than, you know, maybe half a pedal stroke kind of thing. That's not Sagan's fault. The race officials need to be taking care of that. They need to be policing that, and they didn't. They need to hold their hands up and say, hey, that was my fault. Sagan didn't do anything wrong. Anyway, enough said. I, I know I've made that point over and over again, but I'm very adamant about it, and there it is. All right. The sprinters actually carry on after the intermediate sprint point and try to join up with the break, which is now growing towards four riders. But they soon sit up, drop back. But that frees things up. The gap over the, uh, over the break was rather small, and it's going to lead to some late attacks. Uh, we have need for lumberjacks now. Let's go ahead and go to maybe four there. Let's see what is that? Fourteen. Okay, we'll go to five builders. There you go. We can do that. Okay, we still have. Oh, requires kitchen. Oh, that's not good. And the housing, which we don't have yet. Still lacking wood. But we're getting there. One piece at a time. Considering I've never played. And I'm paying very little attention to the game itself. It opens the doorway for late attacks. The break is quickly caught. And then new attacks again. By the time we get to 28 kilometers to go... A group of 14 go off the front and open a gap. And it's mostly downhill from that point to the end of the stage. And Tagan, Bennett, Trentin in that group. In all, six sprinters off the front. Also, and I think more important in this scenario, numerous classics riders make up that group. So the bulk of that group, couple support riders, six sprinters, at about six classics riders. With a downhill finish, 28k to go. Definitely appeared to be a stage winning move at that point. Peloton definitely agreed with it as they almost immediately seeing the formation of that group and hearing who was in it, sat up, cruised to the finish. They were three minutes back in a very short period of time. Cockard, Bosenhagen, two of those six sprinters, and also a mix of classics riders, especially Bosenhagen on that part. They were in a chase group. They hadn't quite linked up with the front. They didn't make it to the front group. The front group pushed on too many riders. It was 12 leaving. Actually, it was three left behind, so there was 15 in all, I believe. 15 kilometers to go. We see an identical finish to what we saw, though in that occasion it was probably 10k to go when it happened. But we see an identical scenario to what we saw a handful of days ago. A not only identical scenario, but identical rider carrying it out 
in the exact same manner that he did last time. Little mini attacks, everybody looking around at each other, sitting up for just a moment, and then BAM! Soren Craig Anderson sprints right off the front of the group at everybody, turns and looks and says, uh, you, you're going to chase him, right? You're going to chase him? No, no, no. no. You, you're going to... No? Are you going to... By time they put their heads down and ride, Soren Craig Anderson had nearly a minute on him. Just like that. I mean, it was 40 seconds in moments. And he's going to just press on. Again, it was mostly downhill. It's really hard to recover gaps on fast downhill sections. Mostly straight downhill sections. And where it wasn't straight, it was technical. So there's very, very little opportunity for them to claw back any time. The lack of cooperation in that group was rather appalling it was horrible to see those guys just let him ride away so easily and without a doubt the team of the tour tactically speaking the team of the tour is sunweb they have been phenomenal three stage wins two to craig anderson one for hershey hershey also came close twice other in other times They've come close in other stages. They have been the best tactically by leaps and bounds beyond anybody else. Jumbo Visma might be claiming the yellow jersey and looking like they're most likely going to have it in a couple days' time. But they've made mistakes. They have certainly made mistakes. Uh, The Mulan has been less than stellar. He's supposed to be there number two guy who was supposed to also sit on the podium or at least be a top five. He's been like the fourth, fifth best climber on that team and has contributed very, very little to the team. Bennett has been much weaker than what he normally is. Uh, if not for Van Art and Koos, they actually would be in a lot of trouble. Those two riders have been phenomenal. And of course, Roglic, but after that right a couple support guys that have been putting in the 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 kilometers on the front while on the flat they've done their job well enough but at least you know in the mountains where it matters for the gc they are by far the strongest team and they've come up short a lot they've been there a couple times but it's been generally down to one or two guys making a monster effort and not the team making a monster effort. They've been dropping the ball a lot, and tactically, especially with using Van Art early, where Van Art goes and rides at the front for 20 or 60 kilometers, which he's done multiple times, and then starts dropping his own teammates. Why aren't we saving Van Art and using those guys up first? It is clear as day that Koos is the strongest climber besides Roglic. It's clear as day that Bennett when healthy, would be that next strongest, if not Van Art. But to me, the form and the where they're at, Koos should always be the main guy supporting Roglic. Van Art should be the next guy. He hangs in there better than anybody else and rides harder than, than anybody else, and he blows up the field better than anybody else. He's the rider of the tour. He's Kwiatkowski in years past, which was why I was so thrilled that Kwiatkowski was able to claim that victory yesterday because he deserved it. Five years of hard, hard, hard labor for a team that won that tour over and over again, largely thanks to his efforts. That's fan art this year. Bennett has been stronger than Demuon, but he's been used at the wrong times. He's been saved for too late when he doesn't have the form, when he's not feeling up to it. And then Demoulin's just not that good of a climber and clearly, clearly does not have the heart to go deep because he, outside of once, leads for a very short period of time and then peels off. But unlike Van Art, unlike 
Kwiatkowski of years past, who work, 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 till they have zero left in the tank, peel off, and then go to a, a literal standstill, and then lose 20 minutes in the last one or two kilometers because they are dying and completely on empty. Haven't you noticed how Tamulan barely works, gets dropped, but only loses a small amount of time because he just can't keep up with the pace, but he's actually got plenty of energy left and then just rides the rest of the way. And then the, the weird, weird tactical thing the other day where Koos riding for the stage, riding to force Pogachar into... Uh, like, what was that? It, it did nothing. It helped nothing. Uh, it was a strange move. And Koos looked good and looked strong, but it was such a strange move. And things blew up, and, and Lopez goes off, claims the stage, stage Roglic barely ahead of Pogachar. If Pogachar didn't crack in the last kilometer, uh, he would have only been about three seconds behind. And that was partially thanks to Koos, right? Anyway. Craig Anderson easily claims the win on this one. Again, Sunweb tactically brilliant. Mezgec, Stoyven take second. The sprinters were there. The green jersey guys were all there. But they did something interesting. And uh, it worked out for Bennett, I think, largely. For Bennett, he doesn't need points. He needs to not lose points. So Bennett wasn't going to ride, so he sits on the wheel. Trentin needs points. Sagan needs points. They needed to ride. They needed to push. They needed to be fighting for second place for 30 and 20 points and getting that over Bennett, who was clearly fatigued, who was dying in that thing. And did they ride? No, they sat up. They sat up, and they end up fighting for 8th, ninth, and 10th place just riding with each other nobody else around him at that point just riding solo well three-man group and then sprinting it out Bennett wins it by a tiny margin because he was just sitting on forcing the other two to do the riding Sagan takes ninth Trentin tenth two points in between there one point after that I think so the gap now, 55 Bennett over Sagan. 14 furthermore down to Trentin. That's the status. It's now at a point, without that penalty, Bennett would have the jersey anyway. But it would be by two points. With one stage left to go, that would be super exciting. And yet, here we are with nothing doing. Uh, it's very frustrating to me that that has taken place like that uh oh we've got all these lumberjacks but we're not getting lumber how's your work going guys are you are you collecting anything yeah zero but maybe that's because yeah they're pulling out just a little bit Okay, okay, we're fine, I guess. Maybe. Yeah, there you go. They're making small progress. Let's speed that up a little bit here as we were a lot. As we get through the end of this. So Sunweb does it again. Steal a stage. Clear sprint stage that doesn't end up being a sprint. And then the sprinters slide off the back when they're in the group at the front. Chance to go for the stage win. Chance to at least fight for second. And they end up battling for 8th, ninth, and 10th. So big letdown on what that could have been competition-wise. Hearing Sagan's interview this morning, he's already given up. 
And what we saw on the stage today suggests that as well. Uh, he really didn't fight for it. And at this point, he's resigned to uh, allow Bennett to win this thing. Now, can we do something with this ballista tower? There you go. Cut stone and crystal. Yikes. Okay. Oh, and this is our first house. I don't know exactly what that's going to do for us other than, I mean, these guys do look clearly tired. But anyway, tomorrow's a big day. Individual time trial. GC guys, of course, looking for overall time. Some of the gaps are really small, one position wise, but the gaps really opened up over those last couple of days where it had been super close before that. So, less change expected in the standings, but we're definitely looking at a scenario where. Moves can happen, so it's going to be exciting. Outside of that, and positionally, only just out... Oh my goodness, somebody burned to death. How did they burn to death? Really? Tis but the flesh wound. I love it. I, I don't know why they burned to death, though. That's uh, peculiar. <laughs> and now we have 12. We haven't come under, under attack or anything, right? No? Just walked into a fire, burnt themselves, apparently. I mean, our first house is... Coming along. It's getting closer. Now, here, here's the thing about the KOM, right? That's the other thing that's going down tomorrow. And it'll be the decisive one. I don't think there's any KOM points uh, on the way into uh, on the way into Paris for stage 21. So KOM, Carpaz has a two-point advantage over Pogachar. Pogachar has to race for the overall. The entire time trial is not what's determining the KOM points. Uh, if you haven't seen the profile, the profile is flat for 75%, maybe 80 And then it's an uphill finish. That climb is the KOM. There is a checkpoint. Intermediate checkpoint right at the base. And then, of course, the final time is taken at the top. For the purpose of the KOM, it's not the whole stage time. So the stage winner is not automatically claiming the KOM points. They are taking your time from the base of the climb to the top of the climb. And that is the KOM. Climb only. Time on the climb, but time only. So that sector... Is what they're taking. Here's what Carapaz is going to be doing on that one. Carapaz is going to ride very comfortably. There's a time limit, but he's going to be riding very comfortably where he's going to be within that time limit, no issues. He's going to be on a narrow bike, guaranteed, through that period, and he's just going to cruise, and he's going to lose a ton of time. Shortly before he reaches the climb, he'll switch off that bike, he'll get onto his climbing bike, he'll get up to speed, and then he's going to use the 98% of his energy, right, 2% to get to there, 98% of his energy is going to go to that climb. And he's going to race up there as fast as he can, which very well especially with the strength of carapaz as a climber easily one of the best in the field should be
be enough for him to claim maximum points. But it'll be interesting to watch, there's no guarantee, because what is also guaranteed is that Roglic, that Pogachar, and the other contenders are going to be going up at 100% as well. The only difference being that they need to get maximum time, period. So they're going to be going hard on the flat. And that's advantage Carapaz. Doesn't mean he'll be the quickest, but it means there's a good chance he will be. So we've got two main things to watch tomorrow. Green jersey, it's over, folks. It's over. Bennett's got it. But in my mind, we're, I'm still playing towards there's a two-point gap. Bennett's two points ahead. That still matters to me. However, it was clear today Sagan did not give it his all. And that has an impact, right? The what-if scenario plays out a lot harder when riders start behaving differently based on circumstances. And the circumstances now favor Bennett. And now we're seeing a difference in Sagan. So would the score have been exactly the same today if Sagan had a three-point lead or a one-point lead, whatever it was, entering? Yeah, right? Different scenario. Especially as tired as Bennett was. I think Bora Hunsgrove commits way more to it than they did under those circumstances. Like I said, it looks like he's given up. Or at least kind of. Just about. I'm Cathlon Gamer. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to hit that like button. I'll see you next time. Be sure to comment below to join this conversation. And I'll see you tomorrow. Two more to go. That CPU of mine is supposed to be here anytime. I didn't get shipping information, so I'm chomping at the bit. We'll see. Might be back on my, my desktop here any moment. Bye for now.